Thousands of anti-government protesters are back on the streets of Lebanon's capital, maintaining their demand for the entire political system to be reformed. Organizers are calling the latest rallies the Sunday of Unity. They say political dynasties that have shared power for decades have only enriched themselves and mismanaged Lebanon's economy. Well, Prime Minister Saad Hariri quit on Tuesday, but protesters say that isn't enough. Let's go now to our correspondent, Zaina Hoda. She's joining us live from the capital, Beirut. So what's happening there, Zaina? Well, the mood is one of defiance. People here are just uncompromising. They continue to insist that it is not enough that the prime minister has resigned. They're calling for a new government, a technocrat government that will prepare for early elections, an overhaul of the political system. They want the political elite, those in power, to resign. Easier said than done. And people here even admit that and acknowledge that because those in power have been in power for 30 years now. They remain powerful and they still have support in the street. While this protest movement can rally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, so can the other side. And that is what uh, they have been doing, showing that they too have support. Now, people here understand that if their movement is just confined to public squares across the country, it will do little to maintain the pressure on the government. A few days ago, security forces moved in, preventing them from blocking roads. Now, what we are hearing is that they're planning to to resort to road closures tomorrow. They're also calling for a general strike. So escalatory measures to maintain the pressure on those in power. They turned out in large numbers to send a message to those trying to topple the ruling elite. Supporters of President Michel Aoun came from across the country and converged outside the presidential palace in Beirut suburbs. A show of force, but also a call for cooperation. There are too many protest squares. The situation must not turn arenas against each other or protests against each other. We drew a roadmap with three points, corruption, the economy and a civic nation. They're your rights, so that's why we need to communicate with you and agree and put efforts together. People here say they too are asking for reforms and an end to corruption. But unlike the anti-establishment protest movement, they are defending their leaders. The president's son-in-law, Foreign Minister Gibran Basile, gave no indication he is leaving office. He is a divisive figure who has been accused of corruption, overstepping his powers and exploiting Lebanon's sectarian structure for political gains. Let us not block the road in front of us with demands that are impossible to achieve today because you'll speed up the financial collapse. The priority is to delay that collapse and maybe prevent it. Mainly sectarian parties still command support among Lebanon's four million people, but the street is divided. In public squares in cities across the country, anti-government protesters are uncompromising. Lebanese from all sects have been coming together, and the crowds chant the same slogan. All of them means all of them. They are rejecting the entire political class. Lebanon's so-called October Revolution is now in its third week. The revolt against politicians who have been in power for 30 years has not lost momentum. Public pressure has reshuffled power. The Prime Minister, Saad al-Hariri, resigned last week, but he could return to office as part of a deal politicians seem to be putting together. And what they seem to be discussing are shares and divisions in the old practice. And perhaps, maybe, just maybe, like thinking about do we give this so-called civil society two or three uh, seats to calm down the street. The problem is what you hear here when you talk to people is we want a coherent, independent, competent government. The major reform these people want is proving difficult to achieve. And no one knows how long the political standoff will last. The Lebanese army security forces were getting reports that they're deploying in a number of areas across the country. They want to prevent protesters from uh, blocking the roads yet again. They did that for two weeks. The country was paralyzed. The country was crippled. But definitely there is a deep political crisis in this country, a dangerous one. And people are worried where the country is heading, especially because the economy, the state of the economy is dire. Zaina, thank you for that. For now, that is Zaina Khodo with the latest live in Beirut. Thank you.